My question has to, it's a little more for comments. So back prior to the flood, we talked about suppositions about the lung cavities capacities for mm -hmm. dinosaurs being smaller due to the increased atmospheric pressure. Right. But we also know that man walked with dinosaurs. Yes, that's right. Is there any documentation or any findings of, uh, I guess, human fossils back then comparing the size of the lung uh, cavities and heart cavities of humans post flood? Listen, that that's the most intelligent question I've heard today, ma'am. I'm I'm glad you. Nothing. <laughs> oh, his degree is in geology, in zoology. Excellent, excellent. You came to the right place. Well, it wasn't that an intelligent question your wife prompted you to ask. Oh, listen, that wasn't stupid. There are no stupid questions around here. Once in a while, you get stupid answers, but uh, no stupid questions around here. He, he once, as a zoologist, his degree is in zoology. Uh, do you have any background in crypt cryptozoology? Uh, like Michele Mbimbi? Michele Mbimbi that I mentioned in the lecture has been cited and documented. Dr. Herman Regusters of Jet Propulsion Laboratory took his wife, <laughs> what, a, what a place to take a vacation, took his wife along with other scholars and he's a certified scholar he's, uh, with Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And that was back in uh, 1982. Took his wife to Lake Telly in the Congo. And uh, in writing, he documents what has happened. And uh, National Geographic ran a short film uh, on this. They were looking for Michele Mbimbi, the living dinosaur. And they were living people. And the biggest problem they had were the tsetse flies that burrow into the very pores of the skin. So the documentary that I saw some years ago, the interview of these scholars, they kept batting themselves because the tsetse flies were moving. But he actually, he took uh, a number of, they heard the roar, they heard the roar, the mating roar of this creature Michele Mbimbi that the natives talk about. Heard the mating roar and he recorded that roar. And uh, uh, some scientists at Jet Propulsion Laboratory ran it through the instruments. It did not match a bull, did not, it was not an artificial roar. It was the roar of a living creature, but unclassified it, that you would appreciate. So uh, that's documented and that's in this book. You probably want to pick up a copy of Chronicles of Dinosauria. That's Michele Mbimbi. Uh, and the fossil record, you came to the right place. In the early 1900s, uh, George Adams discovered the first theropod tracks, and then Charlie Moss discovered the big sauropod, Protellus, Sauro, uh, Poseidon Protellus tracks, and the human footprints. And we have some of the actual human footprints over here that have been subjected to uh, spiral CAT scan analysis showing the compression density under and within those tracks. Now George Adams later dug up some of the human tracks, found at that time was the Caldwell track. And the Caldwell was documented by this geologist, Dr. Billy Caldwell, as an actual human footprint in the rock, 16, 14 inches? Uh, at least about 15, 16. Uh, uh, yes, I, I think maybe it is six, 16. Goliath. A uh, uh, Goliath, that's right. Uh, Bill Osborne had dug it out of the river. So George Adams found a cheaper way to do it, so he carved some and sold them. So the evolutionary community has an out. Uh, they say, well, the human footprints are carved. Dinosaur prints are not. Well, he carved some human and dinosaur prints. Uh, we've never carved any. We don't know anyone who has. Uh, but Bob Summers verifies some of the actual human footprints uncarved in the Paluxy. And before it was against the law to take them out, we have some of the actual tracks that have been scientifically subjected to a spiral CAT scan analysis and they are genuine. They are not carved by, by any means. Very good question. So, but you ask about the lung capacity. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. It's just, you know, there's a, obviously a difference in atmospheric pressure before the flood. 
That's and, that's correct. You know, if that was kind of a, a catalyst, or if it was kind of a detriment to the dinosaurs who had a, a smaller capacity after the flood and decreased uh, atmospheric pressure, we know that Noah, when uh, the ark landed, it landed on a mountain, and obviously, you know, the pressure's going to be a lot higher up there. But I'm just kind of curious what the if there were differences in human all right capacities before the flood versus maybe a kind of a micro evolution of a period of time but of course it'd take time to do that you know and then, anyway yeah <laughs> yeah good very good question so let me attempt to address uh, the human lung capacity the oldest human fossils we have genuine human fossils are neanderthal and cro-magnon their uh, uh, neanderthal man had an even greater lung capacity than modern man. And Cro-Magnon had, we have full skeletons of Cro-Magnon, full lung capacity. It's a genetic thing because they have the genetics to produce that. And with the dinosaurs, again, it's a genetic thing. They can't proliferate. I'm glad they're not proliferating because I'm glad they had smaller lung capacities. We'll wrap it up with this so they don't proliferate very well like armadillos do and rabbits. So out on the highway, almost every day, I see an armadillo that's been killed. A couple of days later, we have a swarm of vultures. Praise the Lord for the vultures. But can you imagine? If dinosaurs proliferated with their small lung capacities, they could hardly move, and a big semi-truck hits one of those. Can you imagine how many vultures it would take to clean up the carcass? So it all balances beautifully, but in the millennium in the future, uh, we're going to need them again, and it'll, it'll all balance out. So genetically, there's not been time even for microevolution to get a genetic load to the point to change that to any degree. So the dinosaurs maintain their small lung capacity. That helps control them. That's good. They can't keep running. <laughs> and uh, man can run so much better and farther and faster, and he has larger lung capacity. So it balances out. We can get out of the way before they step on us.